Let me read to you a passage from the first chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, verse 1 to 16, and then verse 18 to 23. It's the Gospel for the Feast of the Birth of the Virgin Mary on September the 8th. After giving his record of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham, from verses 1 to 16, St. Matthew continues in verses 18 to 23 with this passage that I now read. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came, to, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The passage I read was from Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 23. The Gospel for the feast day also includes Matthew chapter 1 verses 1 to 16. Well, what we may ask was the earliest Christian feast day celebrated by the infant church. I think we could say it was the feast of the resurrection of the Lord, celebrated each Sunday, the Lord's Day. That is why the early church gradually came to celebrate the first day of the week, the Sunday, as the Sabbath, rather than the last day of the week, as was the Jewish practice. The first day of the week was the day the Lord rose from the dead. But gradually, other feasts of the Lord came to be celebrated, including, for instance, his birth, Christmas Day. It was a natural thing to do, to celebrate the birth of the Messiah, especially in view of the extensive scriptural accounts of this in both the Gospel of St. Matthew and the Gospel of St. Luke. Likewise, by extension, the Church came to celebrate the birth of Christ's mother, the Virgin Mary. It was the most natural thing to do in view of the constant love and veneration with which the Church has always, with which Mary herself has always been held by Christ's faithful. So today we think of the birth of Mary, the mother of Christ. We know nothing of the circumstances of her birth and practically nothing of her life prior to the announcement to her by the angel of her calling to be the mother of the Messiah. The church in celebrating her birth each year invites all of Christ's faithful to contemplate yet again the figure, the person of Mary. It is as if the Church seeks out whatever occasions are possible to gaze on her who is, by God's design, our common mother. So let us do that on this, her birthday, contemplating her in the light of the Church's teaching about her. She is God's creature, and like each of us, constantly dependent for her very existence on God's creative intent. God holds her always in his hand, as he does with every creature. But marvel of marvels, she who is a creature of God has by the divine decree become the mother of God, the mother of God the Son made man, and because of this has been exalted beyond every other creature in dignity. She who is the mother of God has been given to us to be our mother too. Our mother is great indeed. Let us consider what more the church teaches about her. 
She is not only the mother of God, formally defined to be such by the early church, and is not only our mother and model, but she is utterly sinless. She is sinless by the grace of God and her own cooperation with that singular grace. The church teaches that she was by the power of God's grace and in view of the redemption that would be wrought by her divine son, kept free from original sin from the first moment of her conception. She was immaculate in her conception. And this we celebrate on December the 8th. St. Luke tells us that the angel Gabriel greeted her as full of grace. This fact characterized her being and at the same time could be said of her at her conception and at her birth. She was full of grace from the first moment of her conception and that fullness was ever increasing with her own human and spiritual growth. The Lord was with her constantly, forming her into the mother he wanted for himself. We are born of our parents and we have no say in the mother we are granted. She, whoever she is and whatever be her moral state, is our mother and therefore worthy of our love and, and gratitude. But God had every say in the choice and nurturing of his own mother. She, Mary the wife of Joseph, was not only God's personal choice as mother, but was God's very product. He created and formed her to the perfection that she attained. He produced of this free creature a spotlessly holy mother who knew not any sin, but whose holy soul freely sped constantly to God. In every possible sense, the Lord was with her. She was blessed among women and always did the will of the Father. She is the help of Christians and there is no more powerful intercessor after her own son, our High Priest. She shares in his intercession for us. She is our mother, our model and our help just as she was for her own divine son who was born of her and grew up in her love. Due to her sinlessness, the church teaches it as a dogma of the faith that she was taken body and soul glorious to heaven at the end of her mortal life. And this we celebrate on August the 15th, the Feast of the Assumption of Mary. The Christian life is a life of love for veneration of and following of Jesus. Mary, whose birth the church celebrates today, September the 8th, is our help in living this calling, this Christian calling. She is our mother, given to us when Christ entrusted his mother to his beloved disciple during his last moments on the cross. Behold your mother, he said, and that is what he says to each one of us. She is the one who more than any other helps us love and serve Jesus. Let us entrust ourselves to her care, resolving to, to hear Christ's word and in every way, no matter what the cost, to put it into practice. <laughs>